Hello and welcome to Salty About Health. My name is Delaney Algier and I'm here with my mom and co-host, Mary. So mom, why are we salty about health? Good question. It's because both of us have had struggles, some more serious than others, and no one showed us simple ways we could jump into the driver's seat and take control. And why are we sharing our views with our listeners? Well, because we want our listeners to realize that it may take time, but with some simple knowledge about health, they'll be able to make a few changes and dig deeper to take control of their well-being and live a more vibrant life. That's fantastic. But right now, before we get into all of that, we just need to do some housekeeping. Here we go. This is an opinion-based podcast. This is not in any way offered as a diagnosis or treatment for any disease, illness, or infirmity for physical or mental condition or any other condition you may have. We are not doctors or practitioners of any kind. Persons needing medical care should obtain it from a medical practitioner. So consult your practitioner before making any health decision. The opinions offered here in this podcast are ours alone. Again, we're not doctors, and the banter you're going to be listening to is our view and our view alone. Okay, that's done. We, of course, also want to have an open dialogue with our listeners. So stay tuned to the end of the episode, and we'll let you know all of the ways that we can connect. Welcome back. So glad you are joining us for our episode on stress. This is such a crazy time, and my mom and I were noticing that it seems like everyone's stress level has gone up exponentially. We want to help you combat the stress in your life. So let's talk about what stress is, what it does to us emotionally and physically, and what are some of the ways we can get it under control. How does that sound, mom? It sounds great, and I'm with you. These are crazy times, and I think most of us need a little help figuring out how we can get through this craziness. So hopefully our listeners will find something in this episode that they will be able to integrate into their lives that can help them de-stress. Okay, so let's start out defining a stressor. It is something that causes a state of strain or tension. The five most common stressors are death of a loved one. So we know that because you, you lost your grandfather last year, right? Yes, I lost both of them in the same summer, actually. So we went to both funerals in the same week. That was a lot. Yes, both grandfathers. So that's a lot of stress. And we, we saw all the stress that it puts on, you know, not only us from le- losing a loved one, but the spouse is also mm-hmm. exponentially more. Separation or divorce. We know people in those situations. Getting married, that would be, you're trying to deal with this, right? Yes, especially like it's not even, I'm not even stressed about the marriage part anymore. I'm just stressed about like the do's and don'ts of, you know, society now. I can't even have a group of people together to celebrate it. So (laughs) yeah, it's very, very stressful, depressing too, which leads into being very depressed. And yeah, you don't even know who can come because every day the state you're getting married in changes the rules on who can get together. Yeah. So that's very stressful. Then starting a new job, which you did last year also. (laughs) (laughs) All the things. (laughs) See, you can make it. I've had all the stressors apparently in one year. (laughs) And you're doing really well and um, your coping mechanisms and de-stressing. And we're going to talk about that later Mm -hmm. in the episode. Of course, there's workplace stressors and financial problems. Yeah. And I think also, I think the workplace stressors too, now it's at home also. So you have new workplace stressors that are happening. A lot of people have to deal with their children all day or, you know, one's working and the significant other is not and so keeping each other entertained so new stresses yes and that works into the albrecht stressors which we're going to talk about right now which is carl albrecht wrote about in his 1979 book stress and the manager and i think they are relevant to today's situations for many of us 
as you just stated, our homes have now turned into our offices and also school mm -hmm. for people who have school age children. A lot of times they're homeschooling now or going online, but are at home watching the video due mm -hmm. to the pandemic. So he talks about time stress, anticipatory stress, situational stress, and encounter stress. And I think you get all those when all of a sudden your life just changes and everybody's at home trying to lead their normal lives, like going mm -hmm. to school and working and making a living, but having to be at home. And then there are unfortunately some people who are at home that don't have the opportunity to work from home and are very stressed doing to being furloughed or losing their job over this. Yeah. Wow. That's so much stress in our lives. So what does that do to our physical and emotional selves? Okay. Um, the physical chronic stress disrupts nearly every system in the body. It can suppress your immune system, upset your digestive and reproductive systems, increase the risk of heart attack and stroke, and speed up the aging process. It's really hard on the adrenals, and the adrenal glands are part of the endocrine system. So the endocrine system is a network of glands in your body that make the hormones that help cells talk to each other. The adrenals are responsible for the production of some of these hormones the body needs to carry out daily functions, including the fight and flight response. So some physical symptoms of stress are anxiety, panic attacks that can man manifest to include chest pressure or pain, heart palpitations, sweating, nausea, and insomnia. Also, it can cause physical tics like teeth clenching, hair twirling, food tapping, etc. Foot tapping? Uh-huh. That can be stressful. No, you said foot tapping. Oh, foot. <laughs> you said it in German. Das foot. <laughs> yes. Foot tapping. There it is. All these are signs of stress. But again, if you have chest pain or heart palpitations, sweating, nausea, you know, you can always go to the doctor. Yes, because those are signs of other very serious things like heart attacks or stuff like that. <laughs> yes. So we want to make sure you get checked up. And if you're not having a heart attack or a stroke, then they can indicate that you're under a lot of stress. I know a lot of people clench their teeth at night. Do you, Delaney? Oh, yes, I do. I, In fact, everyone, as I learned, so I had an Invisalign retainer from after having braces as a kid just to keep my teeth straight. And I noticed not wearing it that I would get extreme headaches if I didn't wear it that night. So when I went to the dentist just a, a month or two ago, I was talking to them about it because I wanted a new one. I had worn mine down. I'm very positive from how it has worn down that I do clench and maybe even sometimes grind. And because I get the headaches from not wearing it, it's actually, it puts it into the medical. So usually the Invisalign retainers after you've already had your teeth straightened are like a cosmetic thing and then you have to pay out of pocket for it. But at least with how my insurance worked, because I was getting the headaches, it became a medical thing. And actually they could put that towards my insurance to help me out with that and get a new retainer. So anyone who's clenching, you can talk to your dentist about it. I, it helps me so much. <laughs> so. Well, that's really good information. And I'm glad you got that taken care of. Mm -hmm. You did have an uncle when he was young, used to do hair twirling. But yeah, so he twirled. Is that my uncle that is now mostly bald? Uh, yes, but that's okay. not the reason. That, <laughs> that's hereditary. And I was looking at that the other day. I, I saw some cheesy show and they said, oh, you're going bald. Blame it on your dad because he's going bald and this was a younger person. And I you know, spoke into the air. Nobody was listening, but I'm like, no, that's hereditary. And it's usually from your mother's side. I'm pretty certain. So if you look at your mom's dad and things like that, then you can see, but it depends on whose genes you get because you have two uncles in one family and one did go bald on top 
earlier and the other one still has a lot of hair. Lots of so, hair and lots of facial hair too. Yes. So yeah. So it depends on what side they get their genes from, you yeah. know, okay. it's a crap shoot, right? <laughs> Unless you have your genes done. I mean, you can go to what, 23 and me, things like that. Well, yeah, but they've already happened. So then you just know what it is. You can't, or, <laughs> society has not gotten to the point where they're engineering it, but well, let's uh, hope not. We wouldn't want to design. There's a movie about that with Gattaca. I don't know. That was like the go-to movie to watch in high school in like biology and chemistry. That's where they, the society gets to a point where they're creating the perfect genome for your kid based off of your two DNAs or whatever, and then like creating perfect people. That was on TV late the other <laughs> night on one of the, you know, you have- I have it on DVD. It's when I watched it in school, I was, because, you know, usually school movies, when they try to relate it to class, you're like, this is dumb. I was like hooked. I was like, this is a really fun movie. And yeah, it's got Jude Law. It's an so. old movie though, right? It is, but this is like young Jude Law. So he looks so nice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Can I borrow that next time I come visit? Absolutely. That and I want, what is it? The kid. So you have to okay. put those two movies aside. Okay. But yeah, okay. That's what it was. I saw it the other day and I thought it was fascinating. But I, I mean, we really need to figure out the cause. Mm-hmm. So when we're talking about stress and we're doing teeth clenching and hair twirling and you know anxiety disorders, we should find out why we, what what's causing the stress is what mm-hmm. I'm trying to say. So then we can tackle that instead of, you know, just saying, okay, I'm, I'm stressed and I have to live with it. We don't want to do that because we had talked about the adrenals in an episode and then we mentioned them here and we'll probably do a whole show on them, but you, you don't want to wear out your endocrine system with stress. Right. Okay. So let's move on to the emotional symptoms of stress, which include becoming easily agitated frustrated and moody, feeling overwhelmed, like you are losing control or need to take control, having difficulty relaxing and quieting your mind, feeling bad about yourself, which is low self-esteem, having a lot of anger, feelings of loneliness, worthlessness, and depression. Now I say that and I think you would agree. When someone's like that, the last thing you want to tell them is just to chill or don't be so stressed oh i know that's the worst thing you could say that's like i know i'm stressed like most people know that they are stressed out you don't need to tell people that they are stressed yeah so it it can just i think agitate them more Mm -hmm. to where it escalates yes but if someone's like that all the time when they're not you know in the heat of being agitated or frustrated there are things that we could possibly let them know right I think I mean the big thing is to let them know that you are there for them and can support them and talk about it because a lot of people are very busy and don't take the time to listen to each other so a big first step is saying I'm here to just listen and I've done that with friends and you know it's just it helps to just blurt it all out (laughs) and get it outside of you that's a good first step a lot of the times Yes. Yes. And then trying to figure out ways to maybe conquer Mm -hmm. the stress so you don't get into those situations as much. Right. But so with all of those, what are other ways that we can reduce our stress? Okay. So we're going to say different strokes for different folks (laughs) because everybody's different and some people resonate with different ways more so than others you know, other ways. So hopefully we can go over a few techniques so everyone listening can find something that works for them. So let's start with the mind. This comes from the book, You Can Heal Your Life by Louise L. Hay. Have you ever heard of her, Delaney? No, I have not. And she's really good. And I I recommend the book. Um, She's got a few books and it's all about positive affirmations. So this comes from her book and she says, every thought you think and every word you speak is being responded to. And the point of power is in this moment. As you learn to control your mind by the conscious choice of thoughts, you align yourself with the 
incredible power and intelligence you already have within you. The only thing you ever have any control of is your current thought. Your old thoughts are gone. So I, I think that's really significant because when we're upset and these bad thoughts are coming um, and we're acting on them, if we just take a moment or two and just get out of the situation or just change the thought, it's amazing how it changes your whole body energy. And I know a lot of people don't believe that, but if you start doing that and start thinking to yourself, well, how, even after the fact, how could I've, I, how could I have, you know, done this a different way with a better outcome and maybe think of the words that you should have chosen. And then it'll get to the point where you're going to react to something and then you think, okay, how can I do this? So the reaction isn't a bad reaction. And I think it just takes practice because it's not going to happen overnight. And it, it, it could take months. You just, every time you react, you go, okay, how could I have done that better? Or how could have I gotten out of the situation? Or do I need to take a few breaths or whatever you find is your coping me mechanism for stress? And you would be amazed at how you, you adapt and how your body adapts and how you will then go to that instead of just reacting to somebody. Okay. Yeah, because I think one of my biggest struggles with controlling my thoughts is overthinking things that have already happened in the past. And I'm like, oh, like I should have done this, I should have done that. So it sounds like I need to make it more constructive feedback to myself instead of beating myself up about it. You know, it's like, oh, like I was so terrible because I didn't do this, this, or this. And now I should be like, okay, this happened. I wanted this to happen. What can I say or do next time to make that happen? Yeah, that's, that's excellent. And just be more succinct going, okay, exactly what you said. This happened. How, what would I have liked to have happened? Yeah, that's perfect. So here are some other ways to calm your mind. Breathing exercises which we have talked about before in other episodes. They are my go-to because they work for me. I found something that worked for me. So I really like that. There are so many on YouTube. So my favorite, which I've talked about is the alternate nostril breathing, but you can find different breathing exercises. And I would just put breathing exercises into YouTube and find what technique resonates with you. Do you have any favorite, Delaney? I, well, there's one that I learned about recently from Ziva Meditation, which was cool. I mean, this isn't their breathing exercise. They just talked about it. And for when you are in a stressful situation, so this is like kind of a last ditch effort to help calm yourself when you're in one of those situations, is the two time breath. So you breathe in for two seconds and then out for four. And that longer breath out helps uh, stimulate the vagus nerve, I believe, and then helps calm you down. So again, that is for emergencies, but I thought that was a really cool tactic. That is. So I think, um, and the key is to breathe out for longer than you breathe in. Yes. Yeah. That's a really cool technique. Yeah. And I'm glad that works for you. Yeah. So again, you know, guided meditation on YouTube, look for meditation and there are apps you can put on your phone for meditation. I've got a few on mine. And so when you look at YouTube, you can figure out, do you want a guided meditation, which is really cool. Some people do it really well, or do you just want the music or the vibration and meditate yourself. And, and once you look on YouTube, you'll figure out what's best for you. And you may want to start out with guided meditation to keep your mind focused. Mm -hmm. But meditation is not thinking of nothing. It's about calming the mind and focusing and getting rid of the agitation and all the external. So if you are meditating and you've just got either silence or uh, music, it's not about not thinking because you have to think <laughs> yes. your, your brain, you just can't turn it off, but it's about not getting caught up in, you know, what am I going to do later today? 
how should I have dealt with that situation? What am I having for dinner tomorrow? It's just focusing on one thing and then your mind relaxes and there are different techniques and we'll probably do an episode on meditation. So we'll just, for now, I suggest you go to YouTube and find out the type of meditation you like. And then there are, again, are apps you can download for free on your phone that also help both guided and just music, certain right. vibrations. Yeah. Cause so. I think the end goal of the meditation is to keep you thinking in your present moment. And that really just gives your brain a workout and that is going to help you besides de-stressing, just increase your creativity and intuition as well. So there's just a lot of great benefits from doing that. I don't do it enough. I want to start doing it. Yeah, we'll have to do um, an episode on meditation because there's science behind the benefits Ooh, to it. And we could go through a meditation at the end of it, maybe? You could like lead us? That would be cool. Okay. That would be cool. Okay, so there are other ways to deal with your stress. And you can talk your frustrations out, perhaps after you give give it a break and then come back to that. And I don't know about you, Delaney, but I've learned this and probably the hard way is when you're really frustrated and you just let it go, it either in a day or two works itself out to where you realize that just wasn't as stressful as you thought it would be. Or it just fixes itself or goes away. Or if you do have to approach it, you've got such a better mindset and you're calmer and that helps things work out. Yes. Yeah. It's, I, it's like they say at work when someone sends you something and you get frustrated, don't send the angry email, sit on it for a little bit. And then you can look at it and be like, okay, like, I'm not going to call this person stupid. They just didn't see like this one thing. Let me help them out or whatever. So <laughs> yes, stepping back from the situation and taking those breaths if you're doing the nostril breathing or whatever and just being like, okay. And analyzing, right? That's again, being in the present moment. Why? Why Why did this happen? What's, like, what's going on? Trying to fully understand it. That's a good example. And I like the, the stepping back because I find when I'm really frustrated and then I just let it go and say, you know what, I'll deal with this tomorrow. You just approach it in a whole different manner. And a lot of times it's not what the other person meant or they didn't mean to stress you out. You just, you know, like you said, what, what did they not get in it or what did they not understand, right. et cetera. Right. Or they caught you at a bad time, right? Like I... I can be just really focused on something I'm doing and my roommate comes up to me and she's like, oh, like, look at this cool thing I found. And I'm just like, no, <laughs> it's, I'm not trying to be mean. I just, I was so focused. I'm like, oh, and then I need to realize like, okay, she didn't know that I was focusing on something. Like, it's fine. She just wanted to have a moment with me. It's okay. Like we can let this happen. So stuff like that. Oh, I totally agree. The next one is be more flexible. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, that's someone still has to give up something. You know what I mean? It, I know. It's a balance because it com what a compromise is where nobody's happy is what a lot of people say. So <laughs> trying to find a compromise where you still are happy with it and you're flexible, but you're not changing your morals or something extreme to get there, you know? Yeah, I think they also have a saying, you know, is it worth burning your, burning the bridge over this situation? Yes. You know? Oh, I liked someone I heard um, speak this weekend. They said it was applied to something else, but I liked this idea of, is, is that a hill you are willing to die on? You know, talking about battles, like, is that what you really want to fight over or can you let it go and fight another day? <laughs> That's, that's an excellent example. And that's exactly yeah what I was trying to state. You really got to pick your battles. Mm -hmm. And so, but you don't want to be bullied either. If, yeah. if there's one person who's never flexible and is trying to ram things down everybody's throat, that's stressful. And yes. you got to yes. figure out, you know, what the catalyst is for them. 
and I would say insecurity would be one. And and then uh, th- those type of people, I pick and choose my interactions with them. So I, if I know what they're inflexible about, I just like if I want to go do something on a weeknight and they are just like, no, that's terrible. You need to be home and sleeping or whatever. Oh, it's a terrible example, but I just don't invite them then. Just don't include that negative energy and just if it's a weekend and you know that they'll say yes, then include them if you really want to be around them. <laughs> like That's what I've started doing. If I know people are inflexible, then I pick and choose my interactions with them because again, that's me being flexible, right? Because I'm picking and choosing, but I'm also keeping my stress down and my sanity. Oh, I like that. It, and you, I know inflexible people and that's how I handle them too. It, like, well, this person's not going to change or experience anything new or Mm -hmm. for whatever reason. So you're right. I'm just not going to include them. And then you just go about whatever you're going to do and enjoy it because it's kind of like our, our yearly Airbnb haunted Airbnbs. The only people that are included are people who are going to have fun and like to do stuff like that. There are some people we know who just don't, either believe in that or want to take part in that. And that's cool. We just Mm -hmm. don't invite them. Mm -hmm. Yes. We just covered be more flexible, Mm -hmm. but that's within, you know, your own guidelines and morals, as you pointed out. Yes. Yes. Like you don't want to be the inflexible, no fun person that people start to pick and choose their time with, but you also don't want to go along with everything that you don't agree with. So if, it feels wrong to you, like then yes, then you be inflexible, stand up for yourself. But if it's, you don't have an opinion, see if you're open to it, you know? (laughs) Exactly. Okay. And the next one is give it time. And we've talked about that. Sleep on it, address it the next day. Mm -hmm. Eat some food, then talk about it. Could be hangry. I get hangry a lot. I have some water, have some little snack or something. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's fine. (laughs) I thought you were going to say, or drink. Yeah. You're like, oh yeah, sure, <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> oh, um, oh, no. So yeah, giving it time is, it's important and it actually works. And I've been going through a lot lately and I find that that is the best way to deal with things, to give it time. Mm-hmm. I, I think that goes back to where you said the anticipation stress. I've been working on that because I anticipate like, oh, like this is going to happen. That's going to happen. And I need to do this now. Blah, blah, blah. And learning to wait has shown me like I was a little preemptive with my save the dates, for instance. And if I had waited a week because I was just so anxious about getting them out. And now oh, it's wait, like, wait, who oh, told you to wait that for that third week and you didn't do it exactly on the third week? <laughs> who, who was that who told you to wait? Your it mother. <laughs> okay that's intuition see but that's also my anxious stress that I'm dealing with so working on that oh good she's working on it she'll give you guys an update so and I and I learned that like what you just said in your head you're you're creating this snowball getting bigger well if this happens that's going to happen this and that and I've been hanging out with people who don't do that And they're like, you know what, just do it or don't, or whatever, don't overthink it. And that works too, you know, because we create our own stress if we're anticipating something that's supposed to happen and and actually doesn't. And that's living in the moment. And if everybody tries to do that, this is what you have now. This is what you, you can speak now for what's happening now. Let's not project into the future or look back at the past. Mm -hmm. Let's just deal with now. Another one that works really well is write down your frustrations. Yes. I actually, so I uh, worked with a youth group where I used to live for a bit and we actually had a night where we did that. We split up into small groups and just wrote and it was just write what is frustrating you now. And I think I still have that in my phone because I was just typing it into the notes section it really helped. It was surprising because normally I don't like the whole journaling thing. I can never keep on top of that. It's not for me, but writing down your frustrations, I'd say give it a go. It it really helped. Yeah. I I think that's a a wonderful thing to do. It's a way to, to release them. 
client came in and they speak to the angels. They, they do the angel connection, which Mm -hmm. is really cool. And I was going through something and he could tell, and he says, you know, you, what you need to do is about the situation write down all the hateful things and don't hold back. He's like, use whatever language you want and write that down in one column. And then in the other column, write all the good things that could come from this or happening from it. And then he says, take it outside and burn it Hmm. and just release it. And that's really good. I've gotten to the point where I wrote it all down, but there's nowhere to burn it without getting (laughs) thrown in jail. (laughs) Because I live in a neighborhood and there's no burning. So I'm looking for that part, but we'll bring um, it when you come visit. Do you have a fire pit? No, we don't have a fire pit, but like we can just, it's a piece of paper, right? We can just do that real quick out back. Nobody's going to say anything here. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure I heard like shotgun shots last night randomly. So it's fine. Okay, cool. <laughs> Sounds like my kind of neighborhood. Um, <laughs> burning paper and shooting Ooh. guns. No, Ooh. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's talk about ways that we can release the stress from our body besides burning pages. <laughs> yes, and maybe starting fires. Please yes. do not, yes, don't go out and burn things. If you're in an no, area follow where... your local fire code, please. And thank you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So, um, my favorite is getting out and walking and breathing deep while out in nature. Um, you know, I like to walk. I could just, mm-hmm. just walk forever. <laughs> What's yours? So some ways for me, obviously volleyball, people are probably tired of hearing that, but volleyball is a great distressor for me. I also like to read a favorite book. So I have a few like fiction books that I've just read over and over and over again because I really like them. And I like arts and crafts too. So I'll just like putz around and make little thank you cards or something. And you just get to like, you're snipping, you're cutting, you're pasting things together. It's just relaxing. <laughs> Yes, you're very crafty. You make all sorts of neat things. Okay, so those are great ideas. And we have soaking in a tub. So especially with magnesium salt bath, what is that? Epsom salt? But so make sure it mixes in because I did an Epsom salt bath one time. And you I sat on the huge up, mound of it. And I sat on it and it burned. Oh my. <laughs> Yes. So mix it anyways. Yes. As your bath is going, pour it in and make sure you're in there with your feet moving it around. Yes. You don't want to. And you can also um, add some essential oils. We're going to talk about herbs that are de-stressing at the end. And so you can add some essential oils too. And magnesium, well, Epsom salt is good for you. Also can be good for you. So it's, it's nice and relaxing and it, actually takes toxins out of your system too. It does. It's very good. If you do play a sport, it's very good to do an Epsom salt bath after like a intense workout or a long tournament day or something. It's very good for your body. Yeah. So you're creating when you're like, anytime your muscles are tearing apart, you're creating that lactic acid or whatever, mm-hmm. I think. So this really helps with that. Cool. Okay. So listening to music, I think we talked about this on another episode too, like don't stress, but you know, it's, you know, when you have to clean the house, it's not always yes. my favorite chore. Yeah. So turning on music totally flips my attitude and mm-hmm. I just crank and up the music. If you get to a certain point where you're just really upset or whatever, um, I've heard, I don't remember where I heard it from, but if you listen to music in sync with your current mood, it actually helps you realize what mood you're in and then you'll switch it and you'll start listening to like happier stuff. So if you're sad, like listen to sad stuff. And if you're angry, like listen to the crazy head banging metal or whatever. And then you're like, oh, like, then you're like, I don't want to listen to this anymore. And that helps you get out of it. Oh, cool. Yeah. Screaming in the car with the windows rolled up. I did that once. Oh my gosh, I do it all the time. Do you? (laughs) Because mostly that's how I channel my road rage. I'm just like, fine. And I just scream instead of reacting to the person. 
Well, that's cool. I did it once. I was coming home from work, was so frustrated. And I did, I thought I was going to shatter the windows, but boy, what a release that was. That felt really good. It does. Also, if you're not, again, because you don't want to engage anybody else in this, but if you're on a remote road by yourself, you can also, at the same time you're screaming, honk, just keep the horn pressed down too. That just like amplifies it and it helps even more. <laughs> yes. Make sure there aren't a lot of people around. Yes, make sure or... there's no people around, but it's also helpful. That's cool. Okay. I didn't know you did that. <laughs> So punching some pillows also, that that's harmless for people who just, I, I had a friend who was getting rid of one of those kickboxing oh, cool. or whatever. Yeah. The, the punching bags, yeah, cool. but it was made for kickboxing and it was so cool. I was at her house. I don't have any wear for it, but I thought it was the coolest thing because I was punching it too. And then, you know, you do some kickboxing that totally releases a lot of stress and gets out. Uh, and you could probably focus on that and just think of maybe something that's stressing you and hit it. They're really cool. Nice. Um, so you could do that or pillows that aren't going to burst, you know, feather pillows when we're all, well, when I was young, they had them. <laughs> and if you, They're terrible because they look so happy and fluffy and then you put your head down and it's like smack right into the mattress. <laughs> There's no padding. <laughs> That's true. But when you have pillow fights, they're great. And then they explode. Oh yeah, then and, it doesn't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So exercising, we kind of talked about that with the kickboxing and the punching. That's a, if you can find a go-to exercise that you can just do when you're stressed, it really helps. Yeah. I mean, I think that's why a lot of people go for a run. I personally don't enjoy running causes me more stress but a lot of people that's a de-stressor you just and that's something simple you can just leave in leaving the situation right you just go go away walk away run away for a little bit yeah yeah i envy the people that can run i i'm not a runner but it, i i see people and I go, wow <laughs> i wish i could do that see but then you see them in like when it's raining or cold out and i'm like oh, i'm so glad i play an indoor sport <laughs> that's true so so was i so yoga is another way i need to start getting into that again i haven't done that for years but i love yoga i have so many tapes of yoga i'm going to try to get into that getting enough sleep is really important people don't understand how sleep affects their health and how important it is and that's the only time we really repair mm -hmm. is when we're sleeping and our body just, especially if we haven't eaten right before we go to sleep, because otherwise we're digesting. They do say, try not to eat three hours before you go to bed. And then your body can just work on repairing itself. And yeah. so that that's important. And it's not going to do that if it's got a digestion takes a lot of energy. So if you eat right before you go to bed, your body's going to be digesting, but try not to do that and get enough sleep for whatever you need. I know six, seven hours is enough for me. I, I hardly can sleep past that. My body, I just get up. Some people need longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm guilty of not getting enough sleep because I like to be a night owl and then I still have to get up early for work. So. Yeah. I force myself. I, I try to go to bed definitely by 11 because I got to get up at five. So mm -hmm. I need at least six hours. Yeah. 10 would be ideal 10 to hours? sleep. Oh, no, no, 10, no. 10, 10, 10, 10. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, I yeah. mean, as a teenager, actually, fun fact, uh, teenagers do need more sleep because of all the crazy development that's happening. That in young children, yes. Yes. Definitely. Yes. Yeah, young kids usually don't want to do it, though. They always wake up. No, yeah, you definitely need a lot of sleep. No, but going to bed by 10 is ideal. And I think some people try nine. I wish I could, but my fiance would, he'd go to bed at like what sunset if it was at like six 30, if he could, as long as he gets up with the sunrise, I guess. Yeah. 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 He does. <laughs> um, another way to help stress is actually helping others. When you help someone else that just releases all sorts of great hormones and things in your body, you know, the, the happy feelings. So helping others is, a really good idea, especially if you're going through something. I think when we really focus on others, we realize that maybe our life just isn't as bad as it could be. 
hang out with your pets or your neighbor's pets. Yes. If you don't have any pets. I am pro this way of de-stressing. <laughs> I love fuzzy creatures. Um, get creative. You can do scrapbooking, like you said, puzzles, painting. You can read inspirational books or whatever books you're into. And gardening is great because it's a project and you get to see things grow and mm-hmm. things you can grow herbs or vegetables or beautiful flowers. Flowers really, you know, perk up your mood when you see beautiful flowers and all the colors. I just planted some, um, cause like my front yard right near the walkway up to the house was just, instead of a flower bed, it was a weed bed. It just hadn't been touched since I moved in. So cleared away a bunch of the weeds and planted just like happy little ground cover. So it's like little succulent looking things or like these little, I forgot what they're up, but they're like little fuzzy, happy green leaves and they're spreading out everywhere and it looks nice. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Okay. Learn to say no. Also, um, as especially females, we tend to be people pleasers and try to do everything. We need to start saying no. And a lot of people say, just say no first. And then once you think about it, you know, you can change your mind or just tell somebody, well, I'll have to think about that okay. and get back to them. Because if you feel obligated to say yes all the time, it, it's a lot of stress. Mm-hmm. Stay hydrated. That's important. Delaney? <laughs> I'm better. So uh, with my intermittent fasting, I've been drinking more water and it's been helpful. Oh, good. Water's just boring sometimes, but it's, I've gotten better with it. <laughs> yes, we need water. Your grandmother <laughs> needs water too. She's, <laughs> She's worse than I am. <laughs> yes. And I know that acupuncture point for hydration. So we can do that on people to see if they're hydrated. No, oh, cool. Though people pretty much know when they don't drink enough water. Eat healthy whole foods so, you know, you can avoid sugar crashes. Mm-hmm. So really good fats and proteins, things like that, not simple carbs as much because then your body will go on that roller coaster. Right. Okay, you can take your shoes off. Earthing and grounding are becoming very popular. They that that would be electrically reconnecting you to the earth. Hmm. This practice relies on earthing science and grounding physics to explain how electrical charges from the earth can have positive effects on your body. And we'll probably get into that in a different episode about grounding, things cool. like that. Okay. Okay. Also, there are herbs you can take to help with stress. Again, we are not doctors, so always check with your doctor before taking anything. But here are a few herbs that may help, and you should always read the label on how to properly take them. And you can just Google, you know, natural herbs to help Mm de-stress that and anxiety, and it comes up with tons. But here are a few. Ashwagandha, which they say is an adaptogenic herb. I don't take that. It's a nightshade. So just to let you know, if people are sensitive to nightshades, that'll be another episode, Mm -hmm. then ashwagandha would fall into that group. Bacopa, chamomile. Mm. That's a classic. Yeah, chamomile tea. Yep. Kava kava, lavender. You know, lavender lemon balm, and you can you can get lemon balm tea. You can get all of these, a lot of them. So is lemon teas. balm that's an herb, so it's not lemon. It doesn't like come from the lemon tree, right? It's an herb, yeah. Okay. okay. And it smells like lemon. It actually smells like remember the old lemon cleaners or Oh, like for wood? Yeah, it smells like... I know what you're talking about, the pine saw or whatever. Well, I just used it the other day. Lemon pledge, I think. So it kind of smells like that. So it smells like lemon. But you can get lemon balm tea, chamomile tea, I think kava kava, ashwagandha. All all those can come in teas. Passion flower is a really good one. And that comes in a tea and that will help you get drowsy. So oh, interesting. a lot of these, the chamomile, the passion flower, things like that, valerian, kava kava, you have to be careful. You probably want to do it at the end of the day, um, but read about them because some can make you um, drowsy or just kind of sleepy. Rhodiola, that's another adaptogenic herb. I 
never muscle test for it. I have it, but I never seem to muscle test for it. We'll talk about that in another episode. Valerian and Tulsi, which is really popular. You can probably get that in any supermarket, the Tulsi is tea. That, is that holy basil brand as well? Oh, oh okay. It's it's holy a- basil is what it so either Tulsi or holy basil. And then Brahmi, which the Ayurvedic medicine uses. I've never used it, but it's very popular in Ayurveda. Those also come in essential oils, a lot of them. So mm-hmm. the holy basil, passion flower, because I know I have that. And what do I use? Sometimes when I can't sleep, I'll take a few drops of an essential oil and like three drops in a carrier oil and put that on and it helps me fall asleep. So there are oils for that too. Again, another episode, but so you can get these in capsule form, tea form, or essential oil form, most of them. So hopefully we have given you some ideas you can really use in your life. So I would pick the one that most resonates with you. And then again, YouTube can be helpful to find and connect with people that resonate with you for stress and anxiety. And so I thought it would be fun to end this episode with some quotes on stress. What do you think, Delaney? That's a great idea. Okay, I'll start. You must learn to let go. Release the stress. You were never in control anyway. Steve Maraboli. Okay, if you want to conquer the anxiety of life, live in the moment, live in the breath. Amit Ray. We must have a pie. Stress cannot exist in the presence of a pie. David Mamet. I like that one. I figured (laughs) you would. You could probably put that up in your kitchen. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. I promise you nothing is as chaotic as it seems. Nothing is worth diminishing your health. Nothing is worth poisoning yourself into stress, anxiety, and fear. Again, Steve Maraboli. If the problem can be solved, why worry? If the problem cannot be solved, worrying will do you no good. Shantideva? That sounds good to me. (laughs) If you really want to escape the things that harass you, what you're needing is not to be in a different place, but to be a different person. Lucius Seneca. Where'd the days go when all we did was play and the stress that we were under wasn't stress at all, just a run and a jump into a harmless fall. Paolo Nutini. That's cool. To combat the biggest enemies of stress, you need these three skills. Self-awareness, self-care, and remembering what matters most. Kelly McGonigal. Well, thanks everyone for listening. And again, we want to hear from you guys. We always want to hear from you guys. Please, please, please reach out to us. And uh, here are just a few ways that you can do that. You can reach out via Instagram and Facebook. Find us at Salty About Health. Even Snapchat at Salty Health. You can email us at saltyabouthealth at gmail.com. Or if you just want to find all that in one place, check out our website, saltyabouthealth.com. We've got all the ways for you to listen and connect there. And finally, if you like what you hear today, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. We really appreciate it. So mom, if they want to hear from you on social media, where can they find you? Okay. I am a certified health coach and I do coach one-on-one. So if you're interested, you can contact me at mary at feedyourselfhealthy.com. I also do research for people who are interested in finding alternative approaches to do in conjunction with the health issue or illness their doctor is treating them for. So again, just reach out to me at mary at feedyourselfhealthy.com or follow me on Twitter at feedyourselfhealthy, which is spelled F-E-E-D-U-R-S-E-L-F-H-L-T-H-Y. That's where they can find me. Cool. Okay. And if you guys want to find me, I'm not a health coach, but I'm on Instagram, hanging out there at Delaney.A. 
can find out how to spell my name in the show notes and everything. And of course, I'll be the one mainly keeping an eye on the social media. So always happy to chat with you guys via the Salty Network. Also, just want to shout out our intro and outro music. It is by Yule, and you can find her at www.yulearts.com. That's E-U-L-A-R-T-S. You can also find her on Instagram at Yule underscore arts or Spotify and YouTube. Check her out. Her piano music and everything else is amazing. And until next time, stay Stay salty. Stay salty.